Hey everybody, welcome back. Today what we're going to be working on is inoculating some hardwood uh, sawdust with oyster mushroom spawn. This is how we're going to do it. Hold on. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get some of these hardwood pellets, which are used in pellet stoves. Now these are just, it's really just compressed sawdust. That's all this is. Okay. Looks like hamster food or something. You want to get an you want to get an all natural hardwood. That's really what you want. So this is going to be hardwood. Um, softwoods, yes, you can get away with softwoods with oyster mushrooms, but they do prefer hardwoods. Okay. So um, one little thing though about this that I was not paying attention to when I when I started doing this the other night. Um, this stuff will expand to about three times its volume once you add water to it. Okay. And let me give you a demonstration of what that, what that looks like. Hold on. Okay. So I want you to imagine for a second that this little pint sized jar is in fact a two and a half gallon bucket that's sitting on my counter that doesn't have anything underneath it. And here I am just going to go pasteurize it without thinking. It made a mess. <laughs> so this looks anticlimactic, but let me tell you, when it was boiling hot water, it was like a sawdust volcano going off on the counter. Okay. So let this just be your warning that if you're going to use the hardwood pellets, that you're going to only use about a third of what you think you need, and then it's going to expand. Okay. Okay, so when you're done adding water to expand your pellets, this is what you're this is what you're left with. It's just sawdust. Okay, this is a damp sawdust, and before you can handle it or do anything with it, you're gonna have to wait for it to cool. Now, I decided to use mason jars uh, as my containers because I wanted to. I wanted the ability to start reusing containers. Okay, so after I had made up way too much sawdust because I expanded three times the quantity I needed. I took a dozen of these jars and filled them up with, this, with the uh, sawdust. Now, uh, there was a delay in time between me being able to jar these up and after they were initially pasteurized. So I actually ended up pasteurizing them again. So what I did was after they were jarred, I put them into my Instant Pot uh, pressure cooker. And the Instant Pot is not as easy to use for for pressure canning as an actual dedicated pressure canner. You got to look up a bunch of stuff online to confirm that you're doing what needs to be done in order to hit the right temperatures and the right amount of time. So um, according to online sources, the Instant Pot can get to like 15 point some odd PSI on high, which is what was recommended in order to pasteurize substrate for oyster spawn. Okay, so what I ended up doing was 45 minutes on high pressure in the Instant Pot. With because of the size of the Instant Pot, I could only put one of these in there at a time. So it really was a tedious process. It took up an entire day, but it's done, okay? So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the lids off of these and we're gonna inoculate our, our substrate with our spawn. Okay guys, I got distracted and uh, couldn't come back to this until this morning. Hopefully you can't see me from that angle because I'm in my pajamas. Okay, so what you have in front of you is my still air box. Now, do you need this in order to inoculate mushroom spawn? Not necessarily, okay? Is it ideal? Yes, but even more ideal is that you'd be in front of like a flow hood. Let me just get this stuff out of the way. So this box, can't see the top there. It has a top and uh, the top is sealed. Okay. And what I have in here with me are the tools that I need that have all been wiped down with alcohol. One jar of my pasteurized sawdust spawn. I'm oh, sorry. Just, it's just hardwood sawdust. Excuse me. And a bag of my oyster spawn. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the lid on this guy. 
It's not always the easiest thing to do from inside of this box. So just wipe this up one more time. And I'm gonna end up using a spoon. Come on. There we go. All right, this feels so not a big deal. A good seal. Okay, so I'm going to move this off to the side for now. Okay. Actually, here's a, you know, this looks crazy, but it's a turkey baster. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the turkey baster to create a cavity in the center. Because otherwise I would need another... I would need another container, which I'm trying to avoid doing. So, I'm just going to drive this into the center, all the way down to the bottom, kind of wobble it, and then pull that out of there. Okay? And then I can also use this to knock my mushroom spawn down into that cavity I just created. So now I'm going to have to open this bag, and it's not open yet. Again, I leave a paper towel covered in alcohol in here just so I can wipe everything down again, even though I wiped it all and the box down before opening this, okay? Before closing it up, I mean. I wish it's morning. I'm gonna cut the lid off, or the uh, top off this bag. Now, normally, this is the biggest bag I've had to juggle in here, and I'm going to get like a smaller bag. So this is going to be a little clunky. I'm going to take my spoon, I'm going to try my best to not spill. Break this up. I did break up this bag a bit before doing this, so then I just take spoonfuls and drop them down into the cavity I created. That's in frame, guys. Let's push that down into the cavity. Break up some more spawn. My spoon here and push the sawdust over the top of that. Okay. Now, if I can get to it, because again, it's kind of a pain in the ass to have to juggle a bag this, this big in here. What I've got is a filter top, because you can't just put that metal lid back on this jar. The spawn needs to be able to breathe. Okay. So what I have here is a filter top that is cut from a painter's Tyvek suit. Okay. That will give it just enough filtration that it can breathe some air, but it's not going to let anything else in. Now, I did already wipe this down with alcohol as well. And this is a little... Normally, these are a little flatter for me to work with. I, I kind of cut it off a piece that was wrinkled. I am going to place the filter inside the lid, place that on, there we go. One, one done. So this is how it starts. And what's going to happen over the course of the next month, month and a half, probably less, 
because there's actually quite a bit of spawn in here for the quantity of sawdust for it to go through. It's going to eat through that sawdust, and this whole jar is going to end up turning white, just like this bag was before I broke it up. Okay, so that is how you're going to inoculate your jar of sawdust with your spawn using a still air box. The still air box is a really handy thing to have, especially if you're concerned about anything getting in there and just completely destroying your grow. Um, it's worth it's worth putting together. It's a cheap little thing to put together. These are just some rubber gloves, some Gorilla Tape, and a plastic tote. I will give you guys updates as these jars continue to expand. And here we are a few days later. We've already got mycelial growth. Starting to take over the jar. You can just see it at the top for now, but remember the core of this also has the, the mycelium in it. And I'm not seeing any other spots where it's popping out yet. All right. Pretty cool. Take care, guys.